It's been a few years since Ella and her brother Lionel first had a close look at the brass plaque on this memorial. It was COVID lockdown. Then we came to the park for a play and me and Ella were running um, up and down and then we spotted the plaque. The inscription, which dates back to 1988 bicentennial celebrations, dedicates the monument to original landowner and early European settler John Parks. We said that is not right and when we got home we wrote a letter to the council. It said they should change the plaque to say that the First Nations people here were the Bedigal people. John Parks didn't find the land first, it was the Aboriginal land. And they'd been doing lots of learning in school, one in particular about, um, I guess, the land that they were learning on at school. And I said, yeah, you could write a letter to the council because if you want to get something changed, that's kind of the process that you go about. You, you write a letter to the council and then they kind of sometimes have to discuss or go through a bit of a process. Part of that process involved seeking advice from a First Nations committee. Vice Chair and local Darug Elder, Auntie Lynn Martin, volunteers her time teaching students about Indigenous history, which made getting the letter all the more special. They all enjoy the lessons, you know, they enjoy the drawing, they enjoy the making of various tools, etc. But you don't really know that you're getting through to them until something like this happens. This month, the council unveiled a new sign, acknowledging the Bedigal people alongside John Parks and descendants of the colony. The new rededicated plaque has pride of place on the monument. But if you come around the corner, just down here, you can still see the old plaque. And the decision to leave it here was a deliberate one. And that shows that at this, this year, we decided to do something about it. That's what it was, this is what it is. To repeat that act of erasure or cancelling of someone else's story is not something that we would like to do. The Uluru Statement from the Heart's calling for truth-telling about our history. So rewriting this chapter and moving together with these young people really is the, the embodiment and the, and the personification of that, that call. Ella and Lionel say they're just happy to see the Bedigal clan getting recognition. They were the first people here and it's important to know about their culture. An act of truth-telling that will last for generations to come. Ruby Cornish, ABC News.